Coming to you live off the of Sea Turtle's back. It's turtle time in the morning. Welcome to turtle time. Good morning. I hope you have coffee. If you should do that, but today is a good morning. The last coming mornings, my timing's been off, but this time, fresh hot coffee, ready to go. All righty, Bark. Welcome, Andrew. So there's your cover. There it is. Um, we're going to go look at chapter two, see where we're at. We have a lot, we still have some details. That we're waiting for, but I'm gonna just keep going on with the story because that's what I gotta do. Oh yeah, I was putting in um I was putting in this skill check. I definitely like in my own homebrew, I put in more skill checks than I've been putting into the Turtle Guilds stuff. But this one, history check on Brackert's vault, is um is pretty critical, like to have some information for this ship while they're talking about it. Well, I know with me, let me check this room. Um, with, uh, I, I changed it. Like when I was doing mine, I put actual DCs just as, I mean, I say they're examples, obviously, but I did put actual DCs and, and the gift of the web and carrying over to this module, I'm just putting easy, medium hearts. So that's up to the DM to determine what the number should be. You know, maybe he doesn't want three. Maybe he just wants two. Maybe, I mean, there's also, like, if you fail, if you fail, you don't get any information. You just don't know. Um, so, so, fun fact, I don't think they could hear me until now. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm changing you or... uh, settings and stuff because I put in a new device. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie poopies. Yep. Donnie's a bit quiet still. A bit quiet. Okay, well, time to start ye yelling into the mic. Nah, I just turned up my levels. It's all good. We are, okay. we are solid here. Okay, so Crabulous proposal talks about the vault. Um, heading out. There's a section called heading out. Or on, uh, not full sails ahead. We already used that. Let's just say heading out. Yeah. Um, embarking. Eh. I don't know. Um, I already have this down here, but I'll put it here in this section. So the, the journey to a Lamora's tooth takes about 12 days at sea. Traveling generally northwest i gotta go look at the map dude look at us with our nice headphones and shit you know i, I get made fun of because these headphones get a little bit but like i like them yeah they're all like flashing lights led yeah mine's nice and white just like yep it's almost as pale as i am so here they're over here so they're traveling generally northwest um do we do we name this big island? Oh, it's um. Is it which island? This one. Uh, you want to call it Little Ippa? Little Ippa, that's right. Cool, Little Ippa. This is that one right there? Yep, yep, yep. Right, yep. That's that. That is that little Ippa. 
Is yep. what what was Big Ippa? This is Big Ippa over here. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Lords, little Ippa. Then. There, give me like. Then. Half a Halfway second. up the we the western coast before turning straight west. We'll put in a little dialogue from Darius. I e no, <laughs> there's a little pun. Instead of saying I know the island well, I'm doing I because he's a pirate. Know the island well. <laughs> uh, know the island well. Should be a pretty smooth sail. Hey Phil. Howdy, Phil. A little bit of cardboard got ca caught under my fingernail and kind of pushed the skin back underneath, and it kind of hurts now. Have you ever had a cardboard cut, like a paper cut, but with cardboard? Uh, I had poster board cut my eye one time. Jeez, that's way worse. Yeah, so uh, do you know what Red Ribbon Week is? I... No. It's like an anti-drug thing, right? It's supposed to be. Oh right, like, I haven't been like... in this. I haven't been in a scenario where people have propagated anti-drug in a long time. Hey Puma. Hey Puma. Yeah, and so we there was a red ribbon week like parade that all like the students had to do. Mm-hmm. And it was a little windy, and so I was walking, and the wind caught the corner of my board. And just like pushed it right into my eye. Oof. Yeah, and so I finished the parade just like crying through one eye. I'm like, ah. You're just so passionate about drug awareness. Yeah. But see, Mama didn't Harris. raise uh, no bitch. And so I finished the parade. Um, Puma, I, I put in, what do you think of this joke, this pirate joke? Instead of saying, I know the island well, it's I know the island well. Come on. Um, should be pretty smooth sail. Especially. Especially once we get to Little Ippa. What should Little Ippa, we should like, there should be something it's known for. There should be some like why it why is it known? Other than being little Ippa as part of the Ippa Islands. Um Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it has like maybe it has the most beautiful view in all the world. Of what? <laughs> I don't know. The ocean. Yeah. Fucking... Mm, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Um, not many pirates around that area. We'll say that there's not a lot of pirates because... Well, there's like a dwarven fortress. Like a... So we're not allowed to say the word that has the letter O and ends with the letter K. It's two letters. Perhaps. Cool, Beth. This won't come back to bite you in the butt sometime. All right. So. All right, all right, all right. We're from Texas. We'll just pull the McConaughey. What if we say it uh, with... Area. What if we say it as a four-letter word with that begins with O, ends with Y, and the middle is K-A? Okie dokie. 
That oh. also works. Yeah, what if it just say Oki? Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okie should work. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's actually put like, um, are we going to have some like vicious merfolk? Is it only for five minutes? That's nice. Uh, Donnie. What? Wasn't there a merfolk? Weren't we t making a, like, talking about a race of merfolk people? Is there like some... Um, so... People of the sea? Yeah, that's what Beth wants. Um, to watch I think it would make sense merfolk if that people. was near Little Ippa. Maybe there's some kind of... There's got to be some kind of civilization. Yes, they're multiple, Colin. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, you're not in voice chat. Um, yeah, aren't they like little shrimp people? Uh, that'd be cool. Um, but I'm just going to say that they occupy this area of the Ipa Islands, and that's why there's not many pirates. Uh, not many pirates around that area. The name tend to not like exactly Phil like sea monkeys but bigger thieving aren't they just merfolk but more shrimp like they're, they're kin the shrimple didn't you want to call him the Scampy? Yeah. Yeah, the Scampy. Um, the, there we go. I'm putting it in here. It's canon now. The Scampy. Maybe the Scampy are native to the Epa Islands. Tries. Among these islands. And don't like... Don't like ships disturbing... Their fishing grounds. Disturbing. Disturbing. Oh, so Colin, you heard about the low campaign Kaz and Beth are running, right? No. Uh, so they're running like a little campaign. Uh, Patty and I. Oh, there. right. For you and Patty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I do remember that now. So they uh, had you had us roll for stats. Okay. But the way Beth does it is. You roll 2d20 and take the highest. Oh. So I'm playing a Fidari rogue named Alistair. Okay. Uh, so this is my stats in order. 20, 20, 19, 15, 20, 13. Well, did you cheat? No, I did it in a dice roller like on Discord. Brian, yeah, Brian <laughs> had a sure. straight meltdown. You hacked the system, man. Yeah, I, we're, I, it seems like we're lagging oh, pretty bad on I the gotta, stream. Okay. Cutting my video, though. You dropping frame. Okay. I'm hoping okay. that with my video gone, it'll pick back up. I don't know. Well. Oh, yeah. Brian was like straight upset. Straight up nap down and he's been in my life for me forever. So, to give you an idea, um, some of the things he said was. Um, let's see. What in the fuck? What in the fuck? Like two messages back to back. Right. What about your stats? Is he, is he playing? No. He was just privy to it. Um. All right. Let's see. There he is. Journey to Alien Wars Two. We don't need much here. Beth asked if I wanted to play, and I told her I'm not a low brain mongoloid.
But yeah, Beth, uh, she is, as she says, a benevolent goddess. And so... Two, two die 20s is considered benevolent? I feel like you could easily get like a five or a six as a stat. No, so you could like, there's more to it. Can you re-roll anything? You can re-roll probably, if right? You, if you get less than a nine, you're allowed to re-roll it. Yeah. Um, and then you're also allowed one free re-roll of something of your choice. So I got okay. a 14 in um, dexterity. And so I used my one re-roll on that. And it became a 19, but because of Fedari, it became a 21. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> is everyone else in the party also that stacked? No. Yes? No. Or no? No. Like... I can't hear you. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm eating crackers. Can y'all hear Donnie? I can't hear Donnie. Uh, hello? Bonsoir? There. Now I can hear you. Like I said, I was eating crackers. Oh. Um, the Mer people are based in Atlantis, so the Merfolk near the Illo people would be calling. Yeah, it's probably going to be like tribes. I think, I, I think I'm saying there's going to be like dotted tribes in the area. He rolled with a bot, but still, like... Bot should still be relatively random. Yeah, no, she was talking about that, like how it's probably, like, it's fun. So another guy got 19, 20, 13, 19, 19, 13. Yeah, just, I think, one, being a level one with some with a stat score over 18, that's a little crazy. Because, like, the new 5e makes it to where you're not even supposed to be able to get it above an 18 without magical enhancement like naturally it's only supposed to ever get to an 18 right or 20 i think 18 20 is the highest it's the highest you can go naturally just in general but like i've never I well don't no think if you think about other methods yeah you can yeah i've heard of people like 24 strength if you get a belt of dwarven strength or a belt of giant strength you can easily go over 20 hmm so as far as I was aware, like, 20 is the max cap. Like, monsters and stuff can have over 20, but... I think that's, yeah, I think, I know what your part you're kind of quoting, but that's naturally. Like, you can't give ability score increases every four levels that take you over 20. But magical items can take you over 20 on a stat score, for sure. Yeah, Patty's not a stack. She has 19, 12, 18, 13, 15, 14. Yeah, but like, again, this is, this is preference. Obviously, this is like a, one of the larger debates in the D and D community. You know, like you're not you're not role playing any disadvantages. You're not role playing any like, you know, it's it's fun to have something that, if you feel is important, that you spend your campaign trying to build up and learn and develop. You guys are all good at everything. Uh huh. That's just my opinion. I mean, I'm sure it'll be still be a fun campaign. It lets them throw more difficult stuff at you guys because you guys are are going to be higher than the average character at those levels. So they're going to be able to ramp up the um. Oh, the music changed. Um, ramp up like the creep the challenges and stuff. But yeah. So some other fun things Brian said is. You got three three twenties and a nineteen. Warlocks have you as their patron. Um, yeah, you're so broken, Jesus fuck. Plus seven to hit, plus five to all damage. Fucking shit, you punch for more than a dagger can do. I thought I, I think I've heard you talk about insanity points. Beth. Yeah, yeah, Beth is doing that as well. Yeah, so everyone has like fears, and as you encounter those fears, um, you uh, rack up insanity points, and you have to deal with it somehow.
uh, the entrance to the this this unique landscape has been named the Maw. Yeah, dude. To a treacherous, a brokenly powerful rogue. Like, um, I got plus nine stealth out the gate. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. That's cool. She, I know what she's gonna do. She's gonna make it ridiculously hard for you guys, and that's that's can be fun. That can be fun. Yeah. So it's just a different. It's a different type of game. Some work. Calm down, Brian. You've never played an OP game before. So uh, another fun thing Brian said was, "Well, the game's gonna be real easy for you the first three sessions. Then one of two things will happen." She won't do anything about it, and the game will get boring because you can't fucking fail. Or she'll secret raise all your DCs to put you on par with a normal person, which will just pass you off when a 26 fails to pick a simple lock. Because you're a rogue, you're a natural skill monkey, and like 11 or 13 get the ability that's literally, I can't roll below a 10. Yeah. Yep. I think it's, I, I mean, I think, I think it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Like, because I don't think I'll ever get to play Alistair uh, in another party. Because, mm -hmm. um... Yeah, there's no way. You can never justify those stats. So, Alistair used to be an actor. Okay. Um, or, he is an actor. He was raised in the spotlight. And in order to, uh, um, he, to the role of a lifetime is what he's going for. Like, uh, I think I called it, um, the Phantom is the role he wants. Um, there, there you go, B. Uh, we all have them. Yeah. Puma has a Puma, Kaz has a uh, Genasi, um, Iron Tofu has a uh, an interesting turtle. A turtle? Um. Whoa! Everyone's here now. I, just, I don't think everyone's here, Tony. I was just showing them off. But yeah, so um. So he's preparing for the role of a lifetime, but he can't quite pull off that dark and brooding, right? And uh, so he he is method acting as a rogue. What? Who? Alistair. He's a fan. He's method acting the rogue. Yeah. He is, he is, is a, he a bard? No, he is a rogue. But he doesn't, but so he's just really good. He's a really good actor. Yeah, he he's one of the best with, you know, 20 wisdom. Like, Stunt actor. He, he can, uh, he can picture anything, really. He gets the slashy award. Uh, I'm yeah. the best rogue slash actor. Yeah, well, dude, he's like the rock without the charisma. But he's Fadari. Oh, wait, wait, what'd you say his strength was? 20. That's stupid. 20 strength, 20 That's dexterity, 20 wisdom. Stupid. 20 strength on a Fadari. Oh, Fadari get plus one strength. They also get plus two dexterity. You, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I don't even know. I don't even know what he is. Uh, the embodiment, uh, uh, Brian said the embodiment of fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah, no, it just, I like to imagine that he comes up to someone, like sneaks up on him, right? Slides the dagger into their back and he just says, like whispers in okay. their ear. Real quick, real quick, backstab. real quick. Yeah. Monsters. Yeah. 5e monsters with 20 strength. There's a Reddit. Of course, there's a Reddit. OK. 
Okay. Strength. So an abolith has a strength of 21. An air elemental myrmidon has a strength of 18. Androsphinx, a monstrosity, has a strength of 22. Let's find one that's more common so people can... Dude, Alistair can... Blue slod. Alistair can bench Mark Henry, the world's strongest man. A clay golem, dude. You have the strength score of a clay golem construct. That's silly. That's silly. But wow! Bev said, again, again he, re he rolled with a bot. We have considered making him re-roll. I used... Your okay, rolls. Beth, you're going to hate what I'm going to say. You're going to hate what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Have you considered that the way you're doing the dice rolls is also contributing to the the high scores? Like, it's just inherent in the system of the way you're doing the rolls. But, anyway. Yeah. Um, that, that's why I, I always use point by um, but random encounters featuring you validated Brian <laughs> he's like fucking thank you have you considered math yeah I, I, again I'm not saying this to say that you did <laughs> it wrong that's arrows. not the point I'm saying it because it's different, you know. It's different. You try, you chose to use a different system than the ones that are common for picking ability scores. So it's part of, you know, it's probably part of the system you chose that people are able to get these ridiculous high skill scores. Skill scores featuring nautical and coastal <laughs> creatures and uh, pi uh, raiding pirates and, and pirate. Chips. So it's like, did you meet my friend Math? And then Brian said, I will die on this hill, I swear to God. I... What do you want to tell me? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. It's your birthday. Thanks, bud. Yeah. Look at my hair. Your hair looks really good. Are you going to have a good day at school? Good. Happy birthday. Have fun at school, bud. I love you. I did. Sorry. <laughs> Lots happening. Okay. Love you. Uh, this time can be used for random encounters featuring nautical co and coastal creatures and pirate ships as well. Yeah. Well, the reason I said no to when you offered point by Beth is because I already rolled an overpowered, overpowered character. Yeah, I know that's hard too, though. Like, the, the reason people wouldn't want to do point by isn't just because uh, um, the system, but it's because you don't get to roll. Rolling is fun, right? Rolling gives you the chance to have some cool extremes or, you know, really make custom, we kind of cool, kooky characters. But, you know. Yeah, again, you can easily do the campaign. You can make it happy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Also, this, uh, this time can be used to used for RP and backstory. See, if I knew it was going to be your birthday, I would have done something differently. Um, so I won that uh, Take This giveaway. Mm -hmm. And I got the custom wooden DM screen. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would have told him to give it to you if I knew it was your birthday. No. Well, then I'm glad you didn't know, because that's silly. That's something you should have. I've got a DM screen. I'm okay. But yeah, it's but you Thank could you have though. requested something. I appreciate it. I'm getting a Hydra. Nice. That's cool. Uh, use for RP and Baxter. Should we... Um, Darius is... Starting to open up to the party, divulging information 
about his family, their reputation in the area, and his father's um how did what we call it his father's like up and down life like a roller coaster roller coaster um so i have a question for chat like what's your out of all the classes and their archetypes what's your favorite class slash archetype combination Cause like I'm trying to figure hey. out what. Go ahead. I was gonna say, like I know, like I'm gonna be a rogue, but I don't know what archetype to choose at level three. Um, I'll tell you. I, I, I'm not saying you should do this, but um, oh, mountainous, mountainous life experiences. His father's life events. Is uh, tumultuous. His his his. Uh, I already used that word though, didn't I? No, I said treacherous. Did I, I haven't used tumultuous. I mean, you can look it up. Tumultuous. That's not how you. Oh, that's how you spell it. That's ridiculous. Um, father is, but it's not his tumultuous father. It's his father's tumultuous life events. Oh, but um, so the rogue I'm playing right now is a thief, just a basic thief. But part of his backstory involves illithids. He basically, his intelligence score is low, and he thinks that basically some illithids came and told, like raided his town. And he thinks that he saw like someone give them gems and like to spare their lives, but he didn't have any. And so he thinks that they're aliens and he must collect gems in order to protect those he loves for when the aliens come back. So if he dies to an illithid and gets resurrected, see you, Beth. Um, he's going to switch subclasses uh, to the new Tasha's rogue subclass, the, the, the Psy Dagger or whatever it is. Oh, uh, yeah, it's... um. Not mind blade. Soul blade. Soul, Soul blade. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm considering doing the new Tasha's Phantom one. The Phantom one. Because like my character, like I didn't think about this when I named it the the role he wants, the Phantom, but it seems so perfect. Yeah. That's the one. That's like death, but isn't that one that's like passed through death or something? Well, you, you've, like, experienced and basically attuned yourself to death. So you got to figure out why that relates to your backstory, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll try to think about it. Maybe like, he died and got brought back. Like, I would choose, um... I mean, it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would consider it assassin, but I don't need some of their abilities. Like, Alistair can fly. Which just add. What, dude, what? you know what? In three point five, one of my favorite thing characters to play was what they called the like bouncer rogue. We play a half orc rogue, and he took like tumble, he took acrobatics, and basically you're just this like brute, but that's that like is deft and agile. Yeah. Hmm. Thief might be a good one. Or Mastermind. Based on what Manga's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Assassins are the one, you know, Assassins are very popular because holy crap, that damage. Yeah, I mean, the damage would be nice, but some of their other abilities I just don't need. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, honestly... Do we need anything else from the journey to Ayla Moore's Tooth? Like, I would um, say you can do random encounters. Do we yeah. want to have a list, like a random encounter chart or something? Uh, probably not. At least not until Brian finishes, uh, like, until that book's finished. Because we could just take some from there. I'll just put a thing in. I'll just put um, optional 
random encounters, and I'll leave it blank. But yeah. Navigating them all. Let's see. Two ships reach the entrance. The mall. Um, see, Assassin's actually weaker now. Mm -hmm. Um, because of the optional class feature introduced in Tasha's. Um, because like the assassinate ability, it gives you uh, advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so. Um, and then it becomes an automatic crit. Yeah, that part is hit. really good. But what yeah. what's weaker about it compared like now is the steady aim, which you get at level th uh, three as well. Um, basically, if you give up your movement and bonus action, you just automatically have advantage. For the, Say that again? So it's called a steady aim. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm, you, I asked my DM to allow me to use that one for my rogue. Yeah. Um, and for everyone else, it's basically by spent by, by not moving. It's another you... it's another option of your cunning action ability, right? Or like you no. can dodge, disengage, it's not even... or hide as a bonus action, and then this is a new action as a bonus action. So now it's dodge, disengage, hide, well... or take aim as your bonus action not necessarily you have to give up your movement and bonus action to give yourself uh advantage on okay, uh, you have to get the yeah so it's basically saying you're putting everything into this attack but mm -hmm. it gives you advantage which then gives mm -hmm. you the sneak attack mm -hmm. and so it's just like yeah. an another way to guarantee you know that sneak attack damage I think it, that ability is really good for swashbucklers, since it's designed for dueling people. Yeah, sniper build to be more powerful. You're right, Mango. Could I sniper? Crash along slim straight. Um, the ships must now challenge yeah. to navigate. Yeah, I, you're right. We should focus on this for a little bit. Yeah, challenge to navigate the the. Um, Navigate skills challenge to navigate this area in order to reach the large sandy beach, how supposedly housing the colossal. Apparently, breath. Phil could go for some mango right now. Telegram for Mongo, Telegram for Mongo. Anyone know what that's from? No. Man, I feel like I've I feel like I've referenced this movie way too many times and now it's inappropriate. What movie? I want to see if someone guesses first. It's Candy Graham. That's wrong. I was wrong. It's Candy Graham from Mongo. Candy Graham from Mongo. Let's see if anyone gets it. Okay. Um use uh mango mm -hmm. asked um if oh, so he'll be streaming homebrew stuff soon mm -hmm. uh if we want to join in on that i've got to be done at the nine um i've got meetings for work but 
I'm sure Donnie will join you, right? Yeah. Maybe. I'll stop in yeah. if I can, if I'm done with meetings and stuff, but I've got several meetings today and then I need to keep unpacking this house. As you can see behind me, I want to get, I want to get stuff set up. Uh, so quick question, Donnie, um, are you, are the, um, the like ships of these pirate bands, like the, like the spindle strike, Yeah, is it going to have a stat block or is it just going to use the stat block? Um, you know, so at the, it will have a stat block, but I don't know if it'll be unique to that or just a class stat block that I cannot okay. answer. Not Brian, are you still in here? Are you still in chat? Let's see. That was Blazing Saddles, by the way. The movie was Blazing Saddles. I've actually um, seen Blazing Saddles, and I just didn't recognize it. It's when he, well, the Mongo's the big guy, and he's wrecking the bank, and he gives him a candy gram, and then it explodes or something, I think. Uh, okay. Linda, kinda. Hey, um... Does the stat block on a ship have some kind of dexterity score? I knew this at so, one point. <laughs> Brian said yes. yes. Okay. What are the modifiers generally like? Are they like Pretty low for maybe Darius's ship is the swoop. No, the person. The I really need to know these mechanics better. Um, use the dexterity score modifier for the spindle strike and Sienna. Oh, for the spindle strike and. Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> that super sucks, dude. Hopefully you don't have any do you have any pre existing conditions that'll exacerbate it? Hopefully you're young and healthy. Yeah, Patty actually got tested recently for the second time. But it turns out it was just allergies. Yeah, I had to get a test two weeks ago, but it was for tonsillitis. Um and character Okay, I, I I feel like diabetes might be kind of a risk thing, but hopefully you're feeling okay and maybe... Yeah, I mean, respiratory stuff would be, you know, worse. The worst, right, yeah. Asthma... Uh, any kind of lung condition but yeah that's why uh me and my oh, dad yeah. are actually at like decent risk asthma uh no actually i have just real bad allergies like real bad but my dad mm -hmm. he has a mass in his lungs and so um yeah, the military refuses to acknowledge that uh, that mass is probably from the burn pits in, like, the Middle East. And so they won't part count as part of his disabilities. Um... And see. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Using character roles to add to the. Uh, character roles to add to the. Uh, CMS. So basically, I'm making I'm making it to where like, um, the the ship will have its dexterity modifier that's a part of it, but 
the crew can do things to help the Sienna through this skills challenge. I'm glad I got the vaccine. That's that's great. It's a great first step in knowing that um, that um, that he might be protected here soon enough. Yeah, um, uh, my great grandma is hopefully going to get the vaccine soon. Yeah, my parents. My parents are on a list. They, uh, my dad has some health issues, and they both have some health issues. So they're. I'm glad they're going to be getting it soon. Uh, so challenge one. Yeah, I get it, Sailor. Um, like working on something, it it does. Uh, it helps you focus your mind on something that's not, you know, whatever's happening to you. So it does. Uh, it does help calm me down as well. Pausing uh, ships to I don't think sail. you showed us your Shadow Crafter. Less. Ooh, it's a multi parter, Colin? Hmm? It's a multi parter? The challenge? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Ooh. Totally. So, and I like the setup too. So the surge comes in from the west, amplifies the bounce and crash along the slim straight. Furthermore, the winds come from the west, causing the ships to sail in an awkward configuration with the sails out wide and uh, less maneuverability. It's gonna be challenging. I, I, I'm glad I've actually had a little sailing experience to write stuff like this. Uh, the captains order the ships at half sail with one with um, further half sail main sail and jib out 90 okay. degrees so his shadow crafter um, catch uh, it's an artifact artificer specialization and it's using illusions to alter craft items so it's very like um, illusion. Illusions. Yeah, it's very illusion based. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of in between like uh like a rogue with like their disguise kits and stuff and an artificer. Yeah, no, that sounds really interesting. Um I'll definitely take a closer look at it after stream. Yeah, no, I, I do like the idea, like, because artificers, you know, are basically, uh, they infuse magic into items, right? And so, uh, by giving them, like, more options of what they can infuse, um, it really does add to it. Because it would make sense, you know? Alright, see you in a minute, Phil. So, Doctor. Yes. So, challenge one, turn to port. Mm hmm I'm still setting up a little bit, though. I've got some dialogue coming that's telling, describing the scene for the group. As you make the final turn north after following the southern coast of the island, you now see the, um, the, the, You now see the um, 
Yeah, so Mango, um, Beth made this. You unlocked that emote. <laughs> That's your emote, right, Donnie? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> um, As you mentioned, you know, after following some of this, you now see the difficulty, danger that Darius was mentioning. But yeah, Beth made a, that and a couple more. Long, um, narrow. Yes, yeah, so there's also that and that. Enemies between large and jagged. Boulders. Ending up far in the distance. Light. Light. Basin. Um, ships slow. So, Colin, do you know what okay. side a uh, port is? Left. Yes. Do you know why it's called that? No, actually, I don't. Um, it's because ships always uh, dock on that side. On the oh. Yeah. yeah, so it's called port side because that's, you know, what that's side. That's where the port is. Yep. Smart. What about starboard? Is that where the stars are? Yeah, of course. What else would it mean? Stars are only on the right side. Mm -hmm. You know, front and back? Uh, aft and bow. Mm -hmm. The ships, ships, there's two of them, slow to a halt. Yet, the... But are uh, to quickly maneuver as the strong waves from the west push the vessels towards the um, towards the. Uh, Post towards the island. Do you play video strong, games, Colin? I used to, not so much anymore. The, I, I very much I played World of Warcraft a lot when I was in my master's program, um, and after that, after realizing how much time I put into that, uh, I kind of I, I didn't I didn't want to be playing a lot of video games and since then i've played like league of legends and hearthstone a tiny bit but the only game i've played for a consistent amount of time and i know it's ridiculous it's weird but world of warships have you heard of it? it's like world of tanks but big battleships and cruisers and it's fun i like it it's like a first person shooter but you're a ship you're like a warship As the waves violently. Yeah, so I've heard of it. It's a it looks cool, but I'm not a big fan of like online games. Yeah, we're so starboard is uh be it's called that because the steering part was typically on the right side because sailors were typically right handed. Yeah, we didn't actually think it was because of the stars. <laughs> I was joking. Yeah. Or so, wheels. Some of these ships have wheels, I think. So, um, Colin, hmm. have you ever played Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Not any newer ones, but like the old ones, sure. They're pretty sick, nasty, dude. The newer ones? Or like just in general. Yeah. Uh, you wanna have you Scorpion. heard of a uh, friendship though? Like as an ending move? 
Yeah. Like animality, bestiality, all of those. Uh, it's not called bestiality, is it? No. Uh, Beast that that's i think it's just animality or something animality that's right <laughs> but yeah it's so. a good call on their part not to call it bestiality yeah so um but yeah Strong. friendship is really funny do you know why they made it why um, hippies no mothers hippie mothers yeah so basically mothers were like this game's too violent especially the fatalities mm -hmm. so they made a friendship yet yeah, fable 2 is still out there what's wrong with fable 2 isn't there like some pretty inappropriate stuff you can do in that game i mean yeah in all fables you can sleep with people and stuff yeah and Strong like, one for the West Drive, you can murder a whole town if you want. That's what Kaz does. Um, I've only played Fable Three, but um, I messed up the ending. So the the best ending, you have to like build up this treasury, and then basically spend it all. And so, uh, I I built it up just a little too short. Oh, one sec. So. I didn't get Sorry, I gotta ending. answer a few things real quick. How are you good? Yeah. Okay. As if the waves and rocks weren't dangerous enough, this westerly, westerly, isn't that a word? Westerly? Um, I've Westward. heard it used before. I don't know if it's an actual word. Westwardly. Westwardly. Blowing from the west. Yeah, that's what I want. Westwardly. Um, what the heck? You get it? <laughs> yeah, do you, do you hear that noise? Yeah, what, what is that? I thought it would be my kid playing with, like, one of those door jams door jams like yeah you know the things that stop your door from slamming into the wall oh the little spring thing yeah i think my kid's playing with it that's kind of funny <laughs> so it's like words this westwardly wind is not optimal for uh, navigating this, navigating, navigating this. Ooh. Mango's making uh, mac and cheese at the moment. Who? Mango. Phil? Mango. Yeah, Phil, what are you doing for dinner? I'm trying to deny us your cooking skills. He's having spag boy. Spag ball. Spag ball. Is cheese wizard got me crazy. Oh, yeah. I brought up <laughs> cheese wizard the other day. So that's a joke from uh, Brian's like stream. I feel like I've heard that before. You didn't someone make it as like a subclass or something? Yes. Yes. Y'all did make it a subclass. Andrew's like no Fine. cheese wizards. Yeah, Andrew's like very much like no to like anything meme. -y, which is how he describes cheese wizard. Gotta swing the sails out wide to catch the wind and we 
Yeah, it's based off his Just PC's mod. Riding these waves where they want to take us. Yeah, his mom was a cheese wizard. <laughs> well, she I think she was just a normal yeah, wizard who is also like a rancher. Nice, good. Yeah, Mango is talking about the Witcher 3 has cheese wizards and a sword you get from them from the cheese wizards lair is really good for lower level gameplay. We have a cheese NPC. Do we? Gruyere or a PC in the test the play test. Oh, yeah. Forgot the full name, but the last name is Gruyere. Yeah, no. Yeah, the Wildfire Miniature has a little che uh, mouse warrior that has a cheese wedge on his shield and uses a needle as a weapon. That's adorable. It's totes dorbs. Challenge one, turn to ports. Just after the... Enter the... The, um, the straight the ships must dodge a large boulder blocking the center central lane. So first I gotta do perception checks. What's the perception checks for? To determine which route would be better to go um, to get to dodge this boulder. Mm. A boulder or like it, it's just a rock, right? Yeah, but the waves are like the waves are ridiculous in the wind. Like basically they have to go at sail. And they're going in direction all of a sudden there's a rock they have to dodge it but it's not that easy because the waves are pushing them forward so even if they turn the rudder they're, they're still going to be going that direction they, their ability to dodge these challenges are hindered i need to put in of course it'll be an option to and to not do this if they don't want to do this they have to anchor the boats here and walk for days probably say like two days walk to get to the coastal shore that they need to get to. Mango said, from Witcher 3 Wiki, Tyromancy is a form of magical divination which features the use of cheeses and their gradual maturing. Different aspects such as the depth of the cheese, the type of mold, and the scent can help predict different things. Other common practices involves melting two types of cheese together and asking a question about the future whilst doing so. You know, as you do. not worth the risk their alternative option is to anchor the ships here and so it's like i could get uh, behind that too short hey uh, colin how do you feel about cheese wizard I don't know. I just don't. Uh, D to shore. From there, it will take two full days to hike along the, the difficult, difficult shoreline to the large and clear beaches. That line in your coat. We should just make this column break. Beep, 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 be
speed. All right, so we gotta change these. Change these. Cheese rind armor. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> like a good Gouda Gouda rind. Those would be just as good as leather armor, I would think. Yeah, and they have the natural smell defense. The, like wax. Yeah. Yeah. If your adventure travels through a desert, get ready for your armor to really get bad. <laughs> it's a natural um, defense. Easy. Like, no one wants to attack you because you smell. Lands on either side of the rock obstruction are clear yet. Turn they both turn out of sight. Hiding H Parm Ryan should be close to plate. Parm Ryan? Oh yeah. A yeah. And wish you're free the fumes are also apparently explosive if my memory serves me right. So you're just a walking powder keg? Apparently. I mean, uh, what are they called? Sappers? Uh, it, it's like a old, it's basically like an old suicide bomber kind of thing. Uh, or basically they plant explosives on like a wall or something, but sometimes they, they don't come back. Um, and so like, uh, if you're... If you're covered in this, be like, well, I guess I'll go out with a bang. Just light a match. Oh my god, so. What? He said, I know it's cheesy, but this class would be very great. Vert great. Is what he said. Nice. I am very excited about it. Yeah, um, sappers were the war versions of demolitionists. Yeah, I was thinking like medieval sappers. Goblin sappers? Yeah, goblin sappers, dude. That was Warcraft 2? I don't know if they had goblin sappers in Warcraft 3, but it was definitely Warcraft 2. A hard... What else could they potentially see that would make them decide to turn left? Beth put in the chat, like in the guild chat, uh, it's like this gif of a uh, SpongeBob, and it's like it's not just a boulder. It's a rock. It's a rock lobster. I don't get it. That's because we're we're too old. We're just not hip anymore. A hidden, a hidden, um, hidden threat beneath the waves. Oh, wait, I thought I put a column break right there. Oh, I need it right here. Get it, like. I figured out how to change like a lot of the design stuff at one point, but still putting stuff into it, into Jam Binder, it still like evades me. Like I'm not as good as you. 
Yeah, but you, you know some tricks about formatting that I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I'm good at the things that I know, but there's a, still a lot I don't know. For sure. I don't know if you've seen this resource. Let me show you something real quick. Have you seen this for how to do watercoloring? I have not. Talks about image manipulation, size, skill, subject, image filtering. You can do like opacity, brightness, contrast, saturation, grayscale. And you can transform them, rotate them, scale them. Layers, learning about blending. So this is how I do that thing where you do the blending of these. They give you pieces, the background that you can blend an edge to get that look. Okay. That's cool. I've been working and practicing with that. I'll, I'll give you all a little sneak peek of something. Nah, nah. Okay, so... Um, hey, Colin, while I have you, did you see I added little, like, shitty outlines? Yeah. Yeah, like, there... A mad lass. Yeah. Poppy's abode cleaning the scraps and more pirates. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, realize how much work we have left to do. We haven't even thought about chapter three. Yeah, dude, I know it's crazy. I think we still need the maps for the battle encounters. We have some of them. I think the chapter Poppy's abode will be one of them. But... Will be relatively short compared to chapter two and four. Yeah, all we can do is set up the city and like set up where certain pirates will be and like they're gonna it's gonna be like a thing, right? I mean they're gonna have to make their way. To, if they make a lot of noise, they could cluster. If not, they can kind of encounter small groups as they make their way towards Poppy's abode. Yeah. It feels like Work, 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 work. Yeah, we're not even halfway done with chapter. <laughs> we need the map of the ship. And Beth doesn't want to make ship maps. At least not, and not anymore. Uh, yeah, so yeah, there's quite a bit left. Okay. Resolution. Um, if the ship, oh, the, oh, we still need the, um, the, the skills challenge. So the way I did it before, it's like, depending on, so at the um, first roll or once once a path has been chosen, did I just stop writing the sentence? Perception check to help inform them on the best evasive, yes, best uh, best path for evasion. Collision. So the perception check. Once path has been chosen, the Sienna must make a dexterity check. To perform the maneuver with PCs offering skill checks to aid in the process even if they fail miserably on this first one i think it'll just be like a hip check on the rock the boat will just kind of slam and you'll hear that awful grinding noise but it'll kind of bounce off and keep making its way yeah 
Yeah, I think it will be a uh, fine, honestly. Like, I I think having a good balance of like giving the players like uh, stress in a way like, oh shit, mm -hmm. you know we don't want to fail this, and like actual punishment. Cause like this first one, you know, they're like, oh crap, uh. It, you know, we messed it up, and, like, this could have been a lot worse. We can't afford to mess it up again. Mm hmm So, like... Um... You get what I'm saying? Oh, hi, Kaz. Kazmodius. Howdy, sir. Depending on the order of the ships as they journey forward, um, the, uh, the order of skill checks uh, I should change it around. The order the order of skill checks depends on the order of the ships as they as they order of the ships as it if the sienna is following they can gain additional additional insight from the spindle strikes maneuvers actions so basically i'm saying if, if the if the spindle strikes going first and the scene is following you know they can see if the other ship turns left or right and then they have to you know it can it can be good and bad it could kind of like make them doubt their own action their own perception or they can just be like ah if they're going left we're going left yeah um yeah kind of give them that like false illusion like well, it either gives them an option to follow, or gives them an option like, uh, well, to not follow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I feel like following would be a safe option, but wouldn't net them as much of a reward as like not as in succeeding like a different action. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. I mean, in a sense. Like for this first one, at least, if they go left or right, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna, I don't know what the consequences of not going left will be yet. But it, again, you don't want it to like destroy their whole ship. No. But the last challenge, I'm, I'm all for the last challenge. If, if you can't do that last challenge, that it would, could potentially really hinder and break your ship. Yeah. I don't know. What I'm thinking is like, um, if they, follow the other ship like if they go left um they have like it's almost guaranteed that they like do a little uh damage but like if they go right then they have a chance of getting yeah, no damage dam well yeah that's what i should do more or no damage at all does that make sense yeah 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 hey shift but we'll do uh we're doing good at least i am I got my new headset, which only plays audio for the left headphone because my computer can go screw itself. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Colin, I believe, is fine. I'm doing pretty good. Today's a busy day, but I'm doing good. Left. That's the... Uh, just to the left. That's the old. Port past that portward. Port, I thought I would say left past the struct. The path to past the um, Wait, wait, wait. 
No, that's the hard one. They beat the hard DC. It's just easy. Let's see what they call me. Yeah, so what are you up to, Shift? Um, uh, we're just uh, doing some skill checks for... Um, There's a single loud bang is the side of the, the starboard side of the vessel bumps the large rock um, as it uh, as it uh, attempts to maneuver by. So, uh, Mango said, confirmed news, we're getting a new Dragonlance trilogy. Yeah, because it, it, it was almost a, 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 a lawsuit, right? That's the one that was almost a lawsuit from the authors. Uh, you're going to have to tell me about it, because I don't know. Like, I'm not I forgot the name of the company but... that wrote it, but yeah, they, they basically, they made contracts, they started writing, they hired, they, they did all the work that you do when you get a big contract like this. And then Wizard of the Coast was just like, nah, we're not going to do it. And so they sued Wizard of the Coast saying that basically they ruined their company. I mean, they potentially could have. It's like, yeah, so the instead of taking it to court, I think they settled and D Wizards of the Coast decided that they would finish out the project. Okay. Yeah, apparently um, Wolf is working on homebrew. I realized that in order to finish the creature that he's currently working on, he needs to homebrew 11 items. Barely avoids contact. Nerd Immersion posted a video about it. Read it directly from the OG writers creators slash creators of the Dragonlance setting. Hmm. Yeah, Kaz remembers reading about the lawsuit, but can't remember how it went. Ugh, I'm tired. Choosing vessel. Even with a low skill check. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> making mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, dude. Ski I could make it tonight too. Ski Maybe I'll yeah. make mac and cheese with bacon tonight. I'm gonna message Patty right now. There we go. Y'all have influenced us. I've got some good breads, a good ciabatta loaf that we could have with it with some butter. Like, dude, so. mac and cheese is where it's at. I think I want to change this up a little bit. I think I want to make challenge one this kind of subtitle. 
Mango's like cheese wizard confirmed. The challenge. Viva la mac and cheese revolution. Oh my god. I used to do like this sweet chili chicken that I mixed with mine and it was the shit. Phil said we usually add sauteed leeks to our mac and cheese to add some veg. Uh, Wolf said Phil I used to do the same until I learned I was slightly allergic to the sugar which sugars within leeks. Huh. Oh, so uh, my mom has a celiac disease. Mm-hmm. So does my stepmom. And, um, so, um, Oreos recently released, um, gluten free Oreos. Interesting. And my mom's like, they're not, you know, the same as regular Oreos, but it's better than no Oreos. Apparently, according to Cash, you can submit your art to Wizard of the Coast as a freelance artist. Wolf well, said fructose intolerance combined with lactose intolerance here. Oh no. Um, I'm allergic to a lot of plants, personally. And so things like raw carrots, um, unless they're processed, I can't really eat it because of the uh, pollen and stuff on them. All right, I think I'm going to have to end it here. Okay. It is, it's been an hour and a half. It's almost 11 o'clock, yep. right? Yeah, uh, it is just about 11. So, um, made a little bit of, we made a little work today. Yeah, we got, no, we got some stuff, some stuff done. done in the mall. Yeah. But yeah, um, thanks everyone for coming by and we'll catch you later. Um, yeah, when's our next stream? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow at... Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. Tomorrow at noon Central Standard Time. Uh, with me will be Notorious Mango. Oh, awesome. Yeah, That's speaking fun. of, you should try. You should stop by uh, when he starts streaming in a little bit. When he starts streaming, maybe we'll just host him? Yeah, and then uh, I might be on the stream. Oh. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. So for the next foreseeable future on Morning Homebrew with Dr. Colin, we're going to be finishing out Chapter 2 with all these awesome chapter, like sub-chapter titles to, to get through. We haven't even gotten to combat yet. <laughs> nope. All right. Cool. Catch you later. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.